everyone. Welcome to Usapang Familia with Anatoline and Crescenta. Today we have special guests. Yes, our guests today are uh, very admirable. Admirable couple sila. And they are the co-founders of Lighthouse Sanctuary. Janelle Hernando and uh, Julie Hernando. But before we get to know more about them, let's uh, all watch this video and let us know more about what they do. I am I am Julie Hernando. I'm Janelle Hernando. I'm a mother, an educator, and co-founder of Lighthouse Sanctuary. I'm a husband, a father, a child advocate, and co-founder of Lighthouse Sanctuary. I first learned about human trafficking in Cambodia, and sitting amongst survivors of sex trafficking, I knew that I needed to do something. When we saw a documentary about child trafficking, we know it was happening in the Philippines. And I remember watching, thinking, that could be my child. We have to do something. And that's why we started Lighthouse Sanctuary. In 2017, we started our journey. Once our answer came, it took us about six months to prepare our family and move to the Philippines. Getting there was a challenge, definitely a leap of faith. I remember thinking, can we really do this? We had to look at every obstacle in our way and ask ourselves, how is it possible to move these mountains to do what God had asked us to do? We were amazed at the miracles that came in through government officials, through different people, locals of the Philippines. Trying to set it up with the government agencies, learning from different organizations. Especially those who had been in this line of work before, who had really become mentors to us and became exactly what we needed to get started. It is an amazing experience to see pieces come together, finding the right staff to be there at the right moment, and seeing how the Lord's hands have put this together. Lighthouse Sanctuary is the only shelter of its kind that does rehabilitation for sexually abused children in its region. I remember standing in a meeting, social workers shouting with joy. They are grateful to have that services available. The local government units are so grateful for the outcome of what's happening with the children, that not only are they able to be safe and put in a safe home after they leave the shelter, but they also are able to inspire their families, their communities, and their neighbors to protect children. People ask all the time what it's like to take the kids in. The kids come and oftentimes they're afraid, they're angry, sometimes they're even violent because they need to express how difficult it is what they've been through. Seeing each child go through what they go through is heartbreaking. By the time a child leaves, they have self-confidence. They know that there are safe people and good people. Seeing them overcome whatever happened to them, I can't explain the joy how that feels. And we give thanks to every donor who has made that possible, who supported those children through this rehabilitation process. We invite you to be part of our team and to celebrate with us with every success that we have at Lighthouse Sanctuary. And we need an army behind us. We need each one of you to step forward with what you can, whether that's $5 a month or $50 a month, to make sure that the children of Lighthouse Sanctuary are cared for while they're in the shelter and when they leave. We need you. So now let's welcome Mr. and Mrs. Fernando. Fernando. Hello, Janelle and Julie. How yes. are you today? We're so excited Hello. to know more about you. Good morning. Ay, good evening. Good evening pala sa inyo. No? Yeah, right. good evening po. Um, welcome po uh, sa lahat na nakikinig. Um, si Janelle po ito and my wife, Julie. So baka man nosebleed tayo ngayon. <laughs> Yeah, welcome back, Janelle, to our program. Oh, yes. We really had an interesting discussion last time. 
And today we're so happy because right now you are with your lovely wife. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you. We're grateful to be a part of your show. Yeah. It, it's hard for me to force, yeah, get Julie to be here because she's usually not a morning person. Oh, <laughs> um, so it takes a lot of effort and a lot of love for her to be here right now. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Before we talk about your advocacy, tell us about your family. Yes. We want to know more. Yeah. About your, like, how many What's children you have family. and anything you want to share about your family. We have four amazing children from the ages of four up to 12, and they have been really great on this journey to make sure that they give what they can to the Lord to make sure that these children have love and have friends and have hope when they're at the shelter. Um, they are, I would say the most important thing to us, of course, is our faith and our family. They, that's what runs our life. That's what what keeps us going and keeps us strong uh, so we're really grateful for our children that they are a part of everything that we do wow we really admire you because while raising your own family you have the time to take care or yes. think of other children thank you yeah. so <laughs> yeah, very impressive yeah, before, before we ask you some uh, questions, we have Annalyn Kim here. Hello, watching from Pangasinan, Philippines, and a proud teacher of KRC. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Have you heard about KRC? Hindi ko alam, have you, you know about no. them? Kuya Ryan's no, Classroom. It's an amazing program, and I think you should invite him to come to your show because he, they are a group of teachers who teaches English and classes for free online. For wow, the kids wow. in the Philippines, so um, I'll connect you with Kuya Ryan, but I'm sure he will be happy to share his program if you guys would like that for your audience. That will sure. be great. Yeah, it's KRC yeah. Kuya Ryan's classroom. They have a Facebook page. Oh, I think I heard oh, of yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. heard of that. It's really so, cool. Yeah, we hope to invite him next time here in our program through yeah. you. <laughs> Yes. yes. So tell us about your journey in providing safety. Yes. To the children. But before that, anything you want to share about what you do? I think I think it would be great to talk about our journey it, and that'll help us express what it is that we do. Yes. But our, our journey really started with our own children. Like we said, they they're the most important our our family and our faith and and that came together when we were praying about how to help other children when we understood the dangers of what was happening with mm -hmm. abuse and, and trafficking. We knew that everybody had a role to play and we wanted to know what ours was. <clears throat> we got a very specific answer that ours was to come and uh, set up a shelter so that we could bring in children and, and help them experience safety and healing. And uh, it was a long process. It took us over two and a half years um, of hard work to be able to make the everything work out. And of course, it took a lot of, of miracles on both sides. Wonderful angels here who helped donate and make things happen and, and angels on the other side who led us. So... And I just want to say that's probably the most important thing um, to, to take note that this will not happen without the guidance of the Lord. That's how I feel. And I could, uh, I would say that over and over again, that this whole journey testifies that there is a God and that he loves these children and he loves us. Um, if it's just us ourselves doing it, I'm sure it will fail long time ago. There are many times in this process of the journey that we want to give up. We want to quit um, because we, we it, it's hard, especially sa Pilipinas, uh, where the system is is really slow and there's right. a lot of red tape. There's a lot of process to do this and do that. Oh, coming from here, going to the Philippines, I, I was ready. Many times I was ready to, okay, what are we doing? Let's just forget about this. But every time we get to that point, um, something will happen that will let us know that we have to continue continue to keep moving forward because this is not we're not doing this for us 
that we are doing this for him. And there are children who are waiting for us. And sorry, I'm thinking of the faces of those kids. Um, if you, that now I am thinking that if we would have quit at that time, sorry, those kids will not have safety. And um, I wish I could share all those stories, but those stories are very, um, uh, we, we protect them and we don't share them openly, but we've worked with um, 24, 20, 30 kids, um, 30 kids um, since we opened our door. And right now we have uh, 12 kids right now, it's a shelter. Um, and I'm so grateful um, that, uh, that we were able to do this with the guidance of the Lord and make it happen. Um, and now we have a shelter. We have uh, um, staff who are amazing. Staff are amazing. And each one of them are also, um, I feel like they are guided to be part of the team. Um, and, and that's the whole process. Lahat ng mga tao who become part and making this happen, I felt like they were really, uh, an, they were prepared um, by the Lord before we even started. Um, and, and it's amazing for me to watch and to see that happen. Sorry. Yes, watching Asimo. your story, you're watching your story. I, I can say that you, know, you mentioned last time that this is, this is something that is widespread. It's mm -hmm. really happening, but it's not talked about, right? And so I imagine that there must be a lot of prayers. I mean, uh, a lot of people, especially the victims, were praying hard about this, their situation. And we're so glad that there are people like you who, who are instruments, like who are answering the prayers of these people. Of like, heart. Yeah, yeah, you acted on that prompting because we know that, uh, of course, our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ love them. And uh, you are the Lord's hand in answering the prayers of these of this victims, of their families who don't know what to do. And for those who are just <laughs> joining in, uh, we want to inform everyone that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Hernando, they are the uh, founder and co-founder co -founder yes. of uh, the Lighthouse Sanctuary. Yeah, they so have they a team. So they are saving and protecting uh, children, uh, those who are abused. Um, from those abusers. So we will know more about their program right now. Yes. And we're so blessed to have them and explain to us their program and how we can help them and join them in this cause. Yeah, it started with acting on that promptings, on that inspiration, and now they're growing. There are more and more, pe more people uh, helping them. And so we're happy with that. And we want to help them grow even more. So we'll be more aware of this. Okay, before we let uh, Julie talk, let's uh, say hello to Janeline Abdon Dayate. Uh, yeah. Watching from Quezon Province, and thank you for sharing, Janeline. And also, we have here President Reynaldo Miko, uh, one of the uh, state presidency of Ordinate State. state. Oh, wow. Wow, very Good evening, cool. President Miko. Yes, I think Miko. Julie has something to say. Uh, I was going to say that that it's true what you said we we uh, we followed a prompting and what we realized is there's there's a, a role for every single person out there. Um, our a couple of our last girls who were rescued it was because a citizen, someone who recognized their need, who recognized there was even a possibility that they were being abused, reported and they followed their prompting and that prompting helped to answer the prayers of these girls. And so I think if there's anything we want to share today, it's, it's the message that this is a rampant problem, that at least one in five children suffers from abuse. It's a huge rampant problem, it's everywhere. It's not just in the Philippines, it's, it's across right. the world. And those who are abused in their homes are more likely to be abused systematically, meaning exploited either via the internet or throughout their neighborhood 
or even in a brothel. Mm -hmm. And so to protect these children from being exploited on a bigger level, we really need to reach them in their homes. Start. Which I home. love your passion for family that you've created this show because you love families because that's our answer. Strong families who are in tune with, with the children are going to be the ones who, who answer these prayers as well, who recognize needs, who protect the children. Um, I, right now we're in a really unique situation and in a really scary situation because of COVID. Right now they're reporting 300% higher rates of children being reported through abuse. So, And that's just being reported. We're not talking about things that are not reported um, since the lockdown. So this lockdown is actually really terrible for the uh, child exploitation and trafficking. It's really sad what's happening. So at minimum, they've reported that uh, child pornography being made online is up 30%. Um, and we know that, again, is only what's being reported. reported. Mm -hmm. There are 2 million more cases of OSEC that have been re recorded, reported across the world. OSEC is online sexual exploitation of children. So 2 million um, has been reported. Just during mm -hmm. this yeah. year. Um, so right now, the traffickers and those who, who abuse online are quite happy because children are being taken out of school, taken out of after school programs, all of the things that keep them safe. And they're being put in front of technology. So there are so many children now who have access to the internet through any device, a, a, tele, a, a, a cell phone or what have you. And these traffickers are working night and day because again, they don't have jobs right now. They're in lockdown. So these traffickers, pedophiles, they're searching night and day for children who are willing to do anything to show themselves online. Um, oftentimes they will pose as the perfect boyfriend. So you have teenage girls who meet the perfect guy online. Almost always is someone who will eventually exploit them. So we, we send out a warning to parents that children are being abused as young as six years old online because they don't understand what they're doing. Yeah, and the one that Julie's talking, that's just recent. There is um, siblings, they're six years old. They're only playing online. Naglalaro lang sila online. And the parents doesn't know about that yung mga anak nila, when they play online, they're actually talking sa totoong tao. I mean, sa panahon natin, when we play games, kalaro natin is yung computer lang ang kalaro natin. We're not, but now it's very different. We live in a bit different journey. When kids play online, they are talking to real people. So there is a recent case that uh, from OUR, Operation Underground Railroad. And if you guys don't follow them, I think anyone who listens should follow them. His name is Tim Ballard. He's going to be the, I, I like to call him our, our new generation Moroni because he's fighting this fight. He's leading um, this fight against, uh, against uh, abuse of children. But going back, he just reported that they, there's this six years old who the, the traffickers convinced yung mga bata na yun to send nude pictures of themselves sa traffickers na, na ito who were, they were just playing online. But and, and I want to say that, that, uh, that the traffickers, they are smart. You know, if we don't know about them, it's easy for us not to think about them. And the reason we're bringing this up is hindi para takutin ang mga tao. That's not our intention, to put fear sa mga tao. I don't think walang masama online, walang masama sa computer. Those are great tools and things that we could use to go to school, to do programs like this. But there is also a danger. Sa, sa mga bagay na ito. Um, and, and we just want to uh, ipaalam sa mga parents that these things are happening and there are people who has evil intentions online. I mean, when OUR track um, sa tinatawag sila na, na dark web, underground web, um, 
they were tracking mga conversations ng mga, ng mga traffickers. And the way they talk is they're saying, this is harvest time. Ito yung time natin ngayon. Everyone is on lockdown. So they are working. They are harvesting uh, mga bata. And they do that little at a time. They groom mga bata. They will not come online and go play online. Okay, come here, traffic. They don't do that. They are smarter. They will do it little at a time. Konte konte Until makuha nila yung loob. And if, you're, if a child has already been abused within the home, that's easy. They look for uh, kids na walang self-esteem um, or mga bata that they are looking for belonging, um, a place, or yung mga bata na, na dahil na abuse sila, they don't feel like they deserve to be with their community. So they'd rather go somebody who's, who's uh, giving them validation. Yes. They know those things. Alam nila yung mga bata and that's what they look for. Um, and that's why, again, what you're doing for family is so important because that's where it starts. It really starts sa family. We have to restore foundation, family in everything that we do. Um, and the church helps with that. The gospel helps with that. Um, uh, people, friends who have strong family values helps with that. And that's what we should be fighting for um, is families. Salamat. Sorry. Yeah. What else? Do you have something else? Like great. I just wanted to say that that I, I'm really grateful to be here because I believe that we do have a strong message that we have a role to protect our children. Like Junelle said, that the the dangers online are real. Up to 80 to 90 percent of our children will be um, seeked out by a trafficker at some point in their in their time online. That's a very high statistic to say basically all of us at some point will meet one of these people online as long as we're open to meeting them. So our role as parents is to make sure we monitor every single time our child speaks to someone online. I, I actually recommend that we don't give children iPhones. They don't know how to stay safe on their own. So it's not fair for them to have their own uh, smartphones, anything where they can access um, online at any time. I also warn that, that uh, the top places where traffickers go to find children are social media sites. Um, any type of site like uh, Snapchat, Instagram, where there are pictures, that's very common. And then games online are the, the next most uh, common place where they're out seeking. So if your child is even doing an art class online and there's pictures and there's communication with people they don't know, those are the things we need to monitor and watch. Um, also, the signs when someone is already being uh, groomed or trafficked, traffickers like to separate them from their families, turn them against their families. So they'll tell them that they love them more than their family loves them, that they are more valuable to the trafficker than they are to their family. So you'll see when a child starts to turn against their own family, those are signs to watch out for. Um, so our, our message is really protect the children, know where the dangers are, know what the signs are, keep learning, keep sharing, and uh, be in tune with the spirit so that when you're called to report a child, protect a child, that you're aware and able. Yeah, and speaking of reporting a child, and I don't know how this person, but I'm, I think it has something to do with from our last session with yes. you guys. So somebody has messaged us, a uh, Facebook page namin, saying, hey, I have this case. We want to report this case mm -hmm. and recommend them sa inyo. They don't, wala siya sa jurisdiction namin because Parola Santuario is only um, operating within the mga bata within Region 1. Um uh, so we were able to recommend sa kanya to go to a different shelter na kilala namin. So that's okay. We could help them guide kung paano dapat. But because of what we did, I believe that they were able to connect sa page and, 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 and sent us a message. So 
little things like that, I think uh, we need to speak. We need to speak for these children. Let them know that there is hope. And I think that there, there will be people who will be listening sa oras na ito, who are experiencing this. Our message to you is there is hope. And don't be, wag kayong mahiya. You, do, you don't need to feel shame sa nangyari sa inyo. Hindi nyo ito kasalanan. And there are people who will fight for you. And that's what, isa po kami doon. We are here to support you and to give you peace. And, and, and we know and from what we've seen sa mga bata that we've worked so far, that there is hope, there is light. Um, even na nangyari na ito. And actually, there is even more light sa, sa yung iba sa kanila. It's amazing to me. I'm not, I just want to share that uh, we have a child that she's even um, being a light sa sarili niyang magulang. Um, and it's amazing for me to watch that, to see that happen. Kahit sa kanya nangyari, she is telling yung nanay niya na, no, it's okay. Yung nag-abuse sa kanya, hindi ito ka, it, it, um, walang kinalaman yung anak niya. Um, kasi she was, uh, yung nanay parang ayaw niya natanggapin yung, yung isang anak nung tatay dahil pareha sila ng dugo. So sabi niya, sabi niya sa nanay niya, hindi kasalanan ito ng bata. You know, it's okay. Iba, iba yung ginawa nung tatay niya, iba rin yung ginawa niya. So for her to be able to say that, dun sa tatay na nag-abuse sa kanya, it's, it's amazing for me um, to, to see that happen. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. One thing I wanted to say is there's a lot of fear for people to report a child because, well, there's a lot of reasons, but one is they're afraid that child will be taken away. Yes. Um, and I want you to know it's quite rare in abuse cases to take a child out of their home. These are the most extreme cases where the child cannot have safety at home when they come to the shelter, where they literally have no other hope for safety. But please know that we also support those who stay in their homes, but report the abuse and need counseling. The counseling for healing is, is a very important piece of this. And, uh, and so we support those also who just need um, outside counseling from the shelter. Yeah, I think uh, the numbers that you mentioned are really shocking. Yeah. And uh, for parents like us, it's really scary because sometimes we don't know that our children are already on this kind of an online trap. Like we're not aware of it. So we really have to be mindful of the activities of our children. So this is uh, something related to what we're talking about. I We received a personal message about a situation when uh, she was abused as a child and then uh, she was able to actually handle that. She was abused by her father until she went on a mission. She had her own family, but I think right now the post, I mean the trauma. Yes. Mm -hmm. The trauma is like haunting her. Like mm -hmm. the result of those abuse yeah, the are past, showing up past abuse. after mm -hmm. having children and after those years. There's so, really an effect. So do we have a community to help this kind of uh, people? We do. We've talked about doing more. So the, the counseling is the first piece. And... Um, and she's welcome to, to uh, write in and let us know if she's ready for some counseling. Um, we would like to do more as far as retreats and have groups who are, who are at that stage where they've come a long way, but that trauma, it's still there. Um, so we were hoping and planning to work in groups of people to do group counseling and um, give them the tools that they need to be able to, to manage their post-traumatic stress disorder and to um, be able to move forward, if that makes sense. Yes. So for those who are watching right now, if you know somebody who are being abused, so please don't, uh, don't be afraid to, to share or ask not. or to share to their um, page, um, Fidel and Julie Hernando. 
the Lighthouse Sanctuary. So yung, yung page po namin sa Pilipinas, it's called Parola Santuario. Okay, Parola. Um, so that's that's the page that um, yung entity namin because Lighthouse is here for the U.S. and then Lighthouse funds Parola and yung Parola yung organization sa Pilipinas. Um, but I think that the best way, and most likely, kung hindi sila sa Region 1, um, the best way is always report sa um, Women and Children's Desk ng PNP. Um, and they will be, they should be able to guide you kung ano yung dapat gawin, ano yung next steps. And also sa social worker ng munisipyo nila or ng city, that's the, that's the place um, where we should go. Yeah. So we have some comments from our viewers here at Hika Malaya. You guys are are great. You're doing great. And Bea Villanueva, I think you really have some fun. <laughs> oh, hi, Bea. Yeah, yeah I know. Hello. Yeah. Good morning. So how can how can we help in your advocacy, especially those who are watching right now? Yeah. I think uh, I think the Siguro biggest important is yes. yeah. <laughs> na, na nosebleed na nga daw sila. Yeah. Sorry si Julie nagising yung isang anak namin kaya um she's just uh, nagje-check lang siya. Um I think yung isa sa pinaka importante na na na, na gawin natin um lalo na sa nakikinig ngayon who um, who li listen who heard about this na nakrinig yung topic na ito is we have to be comfortable talking about it. Um, we have to start talking about yung issues na ito at kung meron nangyayari, ta kailangan natin tanggalin yung shame. Um, marami sa atin ayaw natin pag-usapan yung mga ganito. Ayaw natin marinig, ayaw natin makita because hindi tayo komportable um, sa mga ganitong topic. And it's, it's really awkward kung hindi natin pinag-uusapan, it becomes very tab taboo. And, and, and yes. ganitong bagay... And even pornography, you know, we don't like talking about pornography dahil it's, it's uncomfortable marami sa atin um, to talk about. But it is a real issue. Um, we live po sa panahon ngayon that porn is, is through the roof. It's a billion dollar bis industry business. And, and lahat ng mga traffickers is connected to this same industry. They have money. They have power. If we don't talk about these things, they will talk about it sa, sa behind us and, and they will continue to groom. Um, the way we give power um, sa, sa bawat isa sa atin, we have to talk about the evil effects of these things. Um, if, if we know somebody who is addicted sa, porno, sa porn, um, which no one will come out, you know, hey, I'm addicted to porn because nakakahiya. Um, and, and, they, and people, we give them bad name you know like pag may tao oh masamang tao ka dahil addict ka sa porn you know we give them shame and they go into that addiction more deeper and deeper what we have to learn is to you know recognize that they are victims of um of this uh, industry as well and they need help they need love they need support sa mga tao to help them get out of this addiction yes. um and and I think that's probably um, one of the uh, ways how we could get out um, of this uh, of this cycle, cycle yeah. this darkness, is to be able to talk about these hard things. Yeah, sometimes, mm -hmm. unfortunately, the family members themselves like keep it within the family yes. because of shame. Uh, sometimes, for example, the mother would just keep it because the mother wouldn't want the father to to be like uh, how do we call that like they don't want other people to know what's happening within the family it's to protect the child and to protect, to protect. the abusers if yes. the abuser is the husband yeah we have that case all the time and, and it's a very common and I want to add to that, maraming mga tao, they don't even want to report yung asawa nila. Yeah. Kasi yung asawa nila yung bumubuhay sa pamilya nila. Yeah, that's exactly. right. And, and then what they do is they put yung blame sa bata na if you report this, makukulong tatay mo. And pag makulong yung tatay mo, sino nang bubuhay sa atin? So kasalanan mo kapag mag-report ka. Yes. It's, there's something wrong with that thinking. 
and and I don't know what the right answer, and 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 maybe I'm too passionate. Sorry, <laughs> because it, it frustrates me and it makes me really sad that that haya anila yung bata um to go through that trauma and put the blame sa kanila na hindi nila report at wag nang ipaalam dahil yung tatay ang nagtatrabaho and yung tatay is will continue to do the abuse. Yeah, so right. Continue to do the abuse. Not, only, not, the, not only to the first child, but to the second, the third. Absolutely, it will become a cycle. Absolutely, and 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 we've we've seen that happen, and not and just to that family, but yung pamilya, yung yung stigma ng bata. We have one. There's a case that yung buong pamilya nila is blaming yung bata kasi ngayon nakakulong yung tatay, and they they yung 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 mga kapatid ng tatay anti they are upset doon sa bata na ni-report niya yung tatay nila. Oh. Because um, because siya yung bumubuhay sa kanila. And they think na kasalanan ng bata. And, and it's really sad that that's happening. Even yung tatay na yun already, um, uh, yung tatay niya mismo na, nabuntis yung anak. This is the, the oh, situation. It and they the still trauma. have that and yung 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 bata na ito he's so happy na uh, na meron siyang proof um and it's amazing and i i think i'm sharing too much information but but um sorry you could take over okay. so at least our viewers right now our aware. viewer our viewers right now know, know that all oh, things are happening like there are things mm -hmm. like this happening so they won't think no this is rare Right. Yeah. I want it to be known that the reason we named Lighthouse what we did was because we understand that, that God is a God of light and he's going to shine the light on these darkest of situations. The only way that this abuse can thrive is if it remains in the darkness. So if it's not spoken about, if fear holds us back from reporting, from, from helping, it will thrive. But God has given each of us light. And if we shine that light on these situations, there's always hope. There's hope for the family. There's hope even for the abuser. We, we will never, ever condone abuse. But we still ho hold hope in our hearts that abusers can change. And that if we shine enough light, not only will the child get help and the family get help, but they, the abuser will see in the light what they are doing. And they will be able to change. And there have been abusers who turn to the right side, who found enough light that they become the ones who are advocating. They become the ones who are so aware they want to help restore what they've hurt. Um, I, I, I believe that we started a war in heaven before we ever came here. It was the same war of light and darkness the same war of good and evil, we're still fighting it. And we're going to be able to be successful if we shine light. Yes. Right, absolutely. I agree with that. It's re But it's really hard, especially at this time, to fight for our advocacy, especially if the society is changing. Like, they think that these things are already normal. It's becoming a norm. That's very true. It's very true. And, and we were told that we're a peculiar people. Mm -hmm. We won't be the norm. But it doesn't matter how dark a room is. Mm -hmm. When you flip on that light, the light always wins. So wow. as few of us as there are who are fighting this battle, we are more powerful. The light is more powerful. And so we can't give up no matter how normal it becomes we still have the power to win as long as we'll shine that light. Wow, we love those powerful words. We, we really know, need those words, especially this time. Yes. Words of hope and encouragement. And, and, and I really believe that, like what we talked about earlier, bawat isa sa atin, each one of us has different talents, has different skills. We can't all do the same thing. If we do, then... then it's, it it's will be uh, again. It is designed that all of us are different, and what we need to do is we really need to get on our knees and find out what is it that I can offer. What is it that the Lord wants me to do? 
And I think we've talked about this before. And that's why I love what you guys are doing. You guys are good with interviewing, getting people here online and giving um, inspiration sa mga tao. And, and I love that you guys doing what you feel like is right. And, and, and I'm, I, I love seeing those in people when they do what they feel like they can, they can, they can offer. Um, for us, we felt like this is something what the Lord has asked us to do. I don't think every person um, will or should um, open a shelter. I mean, if, if that's what they are called to do, they, they should. Um, but I think they are, you need to find where is, where is the Lord asking you to do. Maybe it could be fundraising para sa isang organization. And I'm not just talking for us, for anyone who is uh, fighting for this same battle. Maybe it's education. Maybe um, it's even teaching kapit bahay, just one person. It, that, that it could be as small as that. But as long as we follow where we feel like the Lord is guiding us. And I think that's the most important is the light. We have to follow that light. The light is real. And also the darkness is real. And the only way we could get our way through this darkness, especially sa panahon ngayon, there's darkness everywhere, is the light. We have to find the light, the real source of light. And, and we know, we all know where that comes from. Yes. And we can yeah. be part of that light, though we have different mm -hmm. uh, religions or beliefs. And those who are watching right now, we can be united in this cause. So though, actually, we are helping both not only the, the one who will be abused, but those who are abusers to change. Yeah. Yes. Right. So I, I hope there, there is also a program, or I don't know if there's already an existing program for those abusers who really want to change. Yeah. yeah that's we, we don't have a program for them right now. But I know that uh, churches will have program. Um, like there's recovery a, programs? Yeah, there's a, a addiction recovery programs um, that um, has been done at church. And I would talk to their pastors. I'm sure there are many um, ways that we can, uh, we can guide them um, sa mga church, sa iba-ibang churches. Who but there's a greater, a greater need for that. So for those Absolutely. who are praying about what is your role, yeah. We need so many to stand up and, and support on that side as well. Mm -hmm. If we can do more recovery work, there's less abuse happening. So there, there's so many roles that need to be filled right now that anybody who's listening, it's not by chance. Yes. You, you chose to listen today because you, there's a role for you. There's a, a place for you to plug in and make a difference. Pray about what that is. You'll find it. It's, yeah. And, and the Lord needs you. You know, if you're listening and you're feeling like you have, you can do something, I'm telling you, the Lord's asking all of us to, to, to stand up and see how we can be part of this fight. I mean, there are only few instances of scriptures where the Lord was really upset. And one of those instances is um, offending one of those children. He said that, Kapag uh, we offend one, isa sa mga bata na ito, mas mabuti pang talian ka ng millstone sa leeg mo at ihulog ka sa, sa gitna ng dagat. That's how, that's how he feels about these children. And, and that's, why we, that's what really ended up for us. Uh, we're like dedicating our lives for these children. And I'm Filipino ako. And we know uh, this is happening all over the, the world. And we decide we can do something. And especially in the Philippines, we don't like talking about this. Right. And, and we want to talk about this. We want, we need to be the voice para sa mga bata na hindi nila kayang magsalita para sa sarili nila. They're not gonna go protest na protectahan nyo kami. But they need people who will speak out for them. That magbibigay sa kanila ng importante sa mga, uh, sa sitwasyon na ito. Um, uh, and it, it will be us adults that can do that. And I think that if you know or support any organization, and I'm not saying that kami lang yung nag, there are many organizations sa Pilipinas ngayon who are fighting for this. There's uh, IJM, International Justice Mission. They are the biggest one who um, fights for online sexual exploitation ng mga bata. Um, they have hundreds of cases that they uh, put behind bars and rescued mga bata. 
Um, there's the uh, Voice of the Free, um, isang organization sa Antipolo. Amazing organization. Um, they, they, they fight. They, 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 um, there's the First Love. First Love. Um, yeah, one organization na sa Pilipinas sila, what they do is they go sa bars. Sa mga bars ng mga, sa Angeles, they go house to house and give hope. They do scholarship. They do wow. pinapag-aral. They have a house. They have five houses and they fill those out with girls who needs help. And all of those free of charge just to give hope sa mga tao who are in that industry. It's amazing what they do. Um, Wipe every tear. Oh, that's wipe every tear. Okay. What do you mean? First love First is. Love. There's another shelter. Oh yeah, it's another mm-hmm. shelter. That's right. Um, and, and and many organizations and and yeah anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's really uh, very uh, sad to know that you know the places that you consider should be a refuge, a protection, can be really a place where you your life is ruined like uh, right now the the children in the philippines the students are not going to school but we also heard of a lot of cases before of teachers abusing students in mm-hmm. exchange of uh, higher grades or something like that yeah yep those are co- those, those happen yeah absolutely anytime we put people in power over children yeah there's there's a danger and, and children need people in power but they need the right people in power right. so again it it's very important that we just shine that light and show there are very good teachers out there but if there's one who's not we need to remove that person we need to expose that person shine the light on on that exact uh, scenario mm-hmm. so that that teacher can get justice mm-hmm. they can be served and the children that they hurt can get the help that they need yeah, and I love that Julie talks about power because that's what happens when you give power sa isang tao. They would either use that for good or for yes. the evil desires ng heart nila, and it happens all the time. That's why there's abuse happen, and even sa church, you know, church leaders we're all human. Sometimes, you know, the worst of us comes out when we give somebody power, and they use that power for the evil desires, and yeah. and that could be a whole gamut of things now um, but but i think it's yeah. an important principle it's, it's really good to know that in the church there is this new policy in the church like there is a policy when uh teachers cannot teach student one-on-one or there should be the presence of another adult leader so we have policies in the church right okay. yeah Very important. yeah and they are i think they were just released last year, year. Or this year, this year. For that. Oh, really? so that yeah, it's been a practice like, here in the U.S. for mm-hmm. forever. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. just how it is. But I think uh, us educating those policies helps protects, you know, the mm-hmm. mga situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the church releasing those policies should be a sign of an increasing number of cases. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm sure that so many have been seen and it's it's um one of the most powerful things we're taught all throughout the scriptures and and one of the most powerful pieces of the gospel is that we need to work on our hearts so we can't trust someone just because they're in power Mm -hmm. we can't leave our children with someone just because they were called to a specific calling Mm -hmm. we need to make sure that they're safe but but individually, we need to look first before we judge and and um, are worried about what everyone else is feeling and doing. The most important thing we do is check our own heart. Is it pure? Is our intent pure? Why do we serve? Why do we go to church? Why why are we doing these things? And to make sure that we're doing them because we have a true love for our Savior, because we understand what He's done for us. Um, those kinds of things will make us better as a whole. Though the gospel really is, is for our own benefit. And if we, if we will look at ourselves first and then be filled with that light, that's where we can turn to shine it to those who are getting lost. 
those who are abusing their power, those who are misled, but we have to start with ourselves first. I agree with that. So we have a viewer here, Adhika Malaya. He has a question in Tagalog. Sabi dito, paano nila nasimulan ang ganyang advocacy? We talked about it a while ago. What motivates them and what keeps them going and expanding? Actually, Adhika Malaya is also an author. And they also have this this program, the BAG program, like Be a Giver Project. Yeah, BAG, Be a Giver Project. Awesome. So they also have this community. They have a group. They most of them are actually millennials, and private group. Yeah, yeah, it's a private group. They are going to remote places, giving school supplies, scholarship to Amazing. students. That is very cool. Yeah. That's so they maybe they want to cooperate and then make some Absolutely. collaboration. Yeah, I would be happy if it makes sense. You know, we're all for anything who's doing good things, and and that's all connected. It's a whole network, and we we all of us doesn't have to be doing the same things. Yes. We could be doing different things based on where we feel like it's best. But I love hearing stories like that people who follows what they feel like is right. And, and that inspires us. That's what keeps us going. Question, yeah, how do we keep going? Yes. Yeah, seeing people like you guys, like them, and seeing people who, you know, dedicate their lives um, and, and understanding kung ano talaga yung purpose ng buhay na ito. It's not about for us to be comfortable, to be, to be rich. I mean, there's nothing wrong to be rich. If you are rich, you can do a lot of things. You know, I'm not putting shame sa mga mayaman, but I, I, I do feel like uh, um, there's a lot of things uh, we can do. And one of the things that keeps us going is our amazing staff. Yes. I, I want to shout out to our staff who give, they, they leave their families to come and make sure that these children are protected and they serve them day mm -hmm. in and day out and then go back and serve their families. Sometimes it's exhausting work mm -hmm. to take care of a child who is traumatized and, and not sure that they have value. Oftentimes they do react in ways that are difficult to understand and difficult to care for, but the staff never gives up. They have shown so much light and so much love to these children and not just while they're there even after they go home or are reintegrated they stick with them they become family so we we're not there 24 7. we right our yeah. role our role at the moment is is to make sure that they can continue functioning and to make sure that our children are safe and so we we give a shout out to our staff they keep us motivated and going to expand and to continue because they've done everything the Lord has asked them to do. Mm -hmm. Wow. You're and some of them are listening work. right now. So I just yes. want to let them know, we love you. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. Thank you. You're leading a great team, an amazing team. They yes. are amazing. Yeah. yeah. We also have some viewers here from watching from Hong Kong. Mary Joy Australian. I, yes. yes. Hello, Ligaya. I know her. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we are learning a lot. And uh, this is like an eye opener. We actually realize a lot of things from the live discussion with Janelle <laughs> yeah, yeah, last that's... time. And this time is another, like, it's a deepening yes. of understanding of wow. uh, this thing. Yeah, Judy does a much better job than than I than me. Yeah. So tell us about your family activities. Like, how do you strengthen your own family? Yes. Yeah. How do we strengthen our own family? So we believe in family time. Quality time isn't uh, something you can always plan. So if you have quantity time, then quality time happens. Um, stress is real. And especially during lockdown and all of this, stress is real. And so we try to take time to do what we can do. We paint together, we, we uh, wow. have activities together, we play games together, 
we have pillow fights together. <laughs> we do whatever it takes to, to, to let that negative energy out and, yeah. and put positive energy into our family. Yeah, mostly connect, focus on connecting. <laughs> and I think uh, one of the tools ng, ng adversary is to make us disconnect with each other, with our kids. And anything that helps that disconnect, the adversary wins. If it's you, and we know what that means. If we if we are not connected with them, um, I don't. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with gadgets, computers, and letting them play. We do. We let them watch. We let them play from time to time. But it's important that that doesn't take over um, your connection. We have to feel that we are still connected sa mga anak natin. Um, and I think anything that disconnects us, that's the work of the adversary. Yes. How is it like having four children? Like, do you still have time with each other? How about your, how about yeah, your marriage time, relationship? Your time. <laughs> four, so far. Yeah, I, I, I could say that that's one of our, one of the things that, that we've struggled to really overcome is, is our focus is our children. And it, that's easy, right? Children yes. are, are easy to love. They're easy to focus on and they always have a need. <laughs> so right. we can sometimes get sucked into that and, and forget about our time together. But that's one thing that the gospel reminds us as well is the importance of family. And if we are strong as a couple, we're much stronger to be able to care for our children. So we do try to, to take time together. We can do better, but we try to take time where it's just us um, without our kids or us as an entire family. Yeah, yeah, that's challenging. And I think in couples, since we're talking about that, that's I think that I would highlight that it's important to spend time with each one. And I think that sa kultura ng Filipino, sometimes we always include mga bata. Right. If it's family, we always include mga bata. But I think it's so important to have your time then na kayo lang dalawang mag-asawa or partner ninyo. Because uh, that 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 foundation has to be strong so you can continue to support yung, yung family. <clears throat> well, I think that that's one of the reasons why there are abuses uh, for the children because the couples, they don't have time with each other if they have the time to, to talk, have a date, and then it will lessen, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm. I've definitely seen a pattern in uh, when parents go abroad, especially when a mother goes abroad to work. Yeah, yes, exactly. It creates a scenario that is unhealthy for the family. And we don't shame anyone who goes abroad. We understand that everyone is doing what they hope right. to be what's best for their family. But I think that the warning does need to go out that oftentimes the money that they make is not worth the uh, hold that they leave. Their presence in the family is irreplaceable. And, yes. and sometimes these children are left without proper protection. Sometimes it's because the dad leaves and goes to work all day and can't protect that child. Sometimes it's the father who, who doesn't have the connection with his wife and, and uh, then is left in a vulnerable situation where he doesn't know how to fulfill his needs. So I think it's important for, for us as parents to know how, how valued we are in the home, how valuable our role is in the home, and uh, that there's almost nothing worth leaving that role for. Yes, and we also, thank you so much, Sister Julie. We have Annie here with us. Uh, She's our program manager. Right, so Annie so is our program manager in Farola Santuari. Also known as an angel. And uh, Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's yes. giving hope. Actually, she is also giving witness that the Hernandos. That I think, let's read it. Yeah, the Hernandos is a proof that victims, survivors have somebody to lean on. The victims are not alone if only we'll help them to be rescued by reporting. Yeah, by reporting. Sana hindi matakot ang mga tao na mag-report kasi may mga programs and services designed to help these children grow in all aspects of their life. But the question is, uh, you mentioned of mothers, Julie, you mentioned of mothers going abroad. So it's really hard if children are left alone yes. at home. So they cannot report 
uh, by themselves. Diba? So sometimes it's really hard. Yes, and that's what marami natin laki ng lola, di ba? Yung yes, sa yes. Pilipinas. It's a common thing. And it's by generations na gano'n na yung sistema, na yung lola ang nagpapalaki. Kasi after nung magtrabaho ng nanay, babalik naman yung anak ng... It, it's, it's a cycle. Um, and, and, and I've met people and I've seen people while we were there and, and this is a new thing that that's a generational thing and that's what we're used to. So marami sa atin that we look at lola natin as our nana, you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm not here to say that that's wrong because that's something that, that, that has been generational na nangyari. I, I think that personally, I believe that the mother should be there. Um, but in, in some situations like that, um, I don't know how to, 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 to remove that gap. Kung paano natin mabalik and if that's the tradition ng pamilya nila. And it might be difficult, but I think na yung lola will stand up as a bilang nanay. Mm-hmm. And the lola has responsibility to, to report or kung sino man. They say it takes a village to raise a child. And all of us are, are aware of situations that might not seem right. That uh, well, we might not have proof, but there's something off and we know it, we feel it. Follow that inspiration because it doesn't have to be the mom who reports. It doesn't have to be the Lola. We've seen neighbors. Absolutely. We've seen we've seen community members. We've seen people. Right now, we have so much respect for our, our women police officers who started recognizing what was happening, especially because of the lockdown. And they were inspired by the public. They were inspired by the citizens who were reporting these cases. And so now they've started going door to door to check on the children. Yeah. So it, it's, it's the power of the people. If the people will stand up and say, I see something that looks wrong, I'm going to report it even though I have no proof, then the ball can start to roll and they can start to ask other, other people in the community or, or they can check directly on that child to make sure that they're okay. But know that your role as a neighbor, an aunt, an uncle, a relative is just as valuable as the mother when it comes to reporting. And, and by law, you can report it. Kahit hindi mo anak yun, you can report it. Pwedeng ikaw mismo yung mag-file ng complaint sa abuser. Basta ma-witness mo, alam mo yung nangyari. Even barangay captains can be the ones who's, who file a, a case. Um, and I think you have uh, somebody guest um, that is uh, women and children's um, uh, Bausi, right? You guys talk yeah. about Bausi. Right. Yeah, so those we're, are part of Bausi. Yeah, we had a lot of questions last time. So we are going to have part two of that. Oh, yes. So the like, question and answer on violence against women and their children. children. Yeah, th- those are so good. Those are so important. Um, na maintindihan natin. And then that's how we become empowered. Um, and that's because ang problema sa atin, marami sa atin, we're not Filipino. I'm not saying all, pero marami ako nakita, they don't feel empowered. They don't right. feel like they have the rights. And, and doing a program like this, teaching them, you have rights. We have to keep empowering people um, right. in knowing kung ano yung pwede nilang gawin. Maraming tao takot dahil wala silang pera. Baka, baka gagastos tayo, mahirap na. So they don't, they just be quiet about it and they just suffer, you know. Um, but we have to empower people, you know. They are, they are help. There are government programs na free, libre. Kasi yun ang pinaka always uh, main concern is cost, pera. Dahil maraming tao we're struggling financially. Um, but uh, those are free services that uh, government will help you. Um, yes. especially in cases like child, something yeah. to do with child and women. Mm-hmm. We received a private message here that it really takes courage to report because they actually worry of the abuser giving trouble to their own family. Yeah, well, I, to, to give you an, an, another side, if we don't report, mm-hmm. what is the other side? If we don't report the abuser, guess what? It could be another child that will be abused. Is that better than what than reporting and put that person behind bars? It, it takes faith in the system yes. that they're going to do their job. That's true too. Um, and, and sometimes if, 
it's hard to have faith in man <laughs> because the system doesn't always work. I respect I respect that that concern. I want that person to uh, take it up a notch and put their faith in God. That God is above the system. He's above all of that. And if they do their part, if they do their part, God will find the way to do the rest. That abuser right now has all the power. Right now they're using that fear tactic, all of that to keep them in silence. But if they can expose them, if they can use that light, they take the power away from that abuser. So God will find a way through whatever the system it takes, whatever it takes, he knows the way. We just need to do our part. Right. And another private message, like what if the abuser is the one in authority? Oh. Often that's the truth, right? Yes. They abuse that authority. Um, it, it almost always is the person in authority, but, but we need to go above that authority. So even if it's a political figure, we need to find someone else who will back us. Yeah. Um, and he's talking about hotlines. There are hotlines where you don't even have to um, say who you are, but you can report an abuse. Um, but there's always someone higher that we can go to to get the help that we need to expose these situations and uh, take that person out of power. The more power they have, the more likely they are to continue to abuse. And the, the longer you keep these truths in the dark, the more power they will have over time. And that's what's been happening. They've been in the dark for a long time. And, and if you talk a survey, sa lahat ng mga adults, how many have been abused? There are a lot of us adults who have experienced sexual abuse by uncle, by cousin, or kapit bahay. But we never talked about it. We've always kept it in the dark. And we, until when natin iku continuing cycle na yun. We have to stand up. We have to talk about this. We have to make a stop and let people know that this is not okay and we're not going to accept this. And usually we do this because we stay silent because alam natin na ganun yung nangyari sa atin or meron tayong kakilala na ganun and they are okay. Sa tingin natin, they are okay now. But like what you said, there are cases na they just experiencing yung trauma nung kabataan nila ngayon lang lumalabas because they never really dealt with that trauma. And, sa, and, and the biggest challenge sa atin sa Pilipinas, we don't have enough psychologists that will help mm -hmm. us with this process. Um, and, and, and right now, that's something that we are still working on. We have Annie who have experience working and counseling with these specific cases. We're grateful yeah. to have her in our team. Um, and now we are working with people, professionals here, dito sa US, so we could get the support that we need to bring back sa Philippines. Um, but all of us could start by talking about it. And we want to really share. And that gives pow uh, power sa mga tao who are abused. So if you have experience and you can speak about it, and you could help, that will help people ngayon who are struggling. Who are struggling sa same situation na naranasan ninyo. And the more people that would come out, the more people that would say, this happened to me. Yung, if I am experiencing abuse, I would feel like hindi ako nag-iisa. I'm not alone. Nangyayari pala talaga ito. Then I will have more, I will feel empowered that I can get out of this. Dahil nakikita ko ito. We need a lot more people, examples, who, especially who have overcome yung mga bagay na ganito to really reach out to those people who are still struggling and in the middle of this darkness. Yes, and mm. th this is a sad thing to know also that those who were abused are most likely to be abusers themselves in, if, the yeah, in the future or later years in their lives. Yes. Yes, the, that can cause a stigma. Yeah. Um, it, it is a truth, mm. but it's it's not as common as we want to believe it is. Um, but yes, those who are traffickers today, those who are abusers today, those who we we look at and think, you're disgusting, you're terrible, we put all the shame on them, oftentimes they are generationally abused. They've gotten to that place because they never found hope. So 
that's why we believe there's hope even for the abusers is because we understand why they are where they are. They were not born um, and had a great life and then all of a sudden chose they wanted to abuse their power. Most of them are there because they themselves were abused. Most people who are abused do not become abusers. Um, and, and they're afraid of that stigma. They're afraid that, that if people find out that they've been abused, that they will judge that they will then do something wrong. And uh, we want people to know that, that we know it's a choice yeah. and that most people do not. Um, and we want to support them through their healing process so that they can then protect other people. Yeah, right. And Annie said, uh, Madami hotlines online and information are all treated as confidential. Yeah, so they should know about that. Our viewers should know that our the mm -hmm. calls that they will make are treated as confidential. Or like what you said, report it to us. We are not government. We are not political. You know, we will... We will help you um, uh, go through the process, even if you just have a question and unsure and need somebody support. So, we message lang po ninyo, Parola Santuario is yung um, page po namin, and, and yeah. we will so help you. If you don't go. know what to do, yes. so they can message. Yeah, right. And Jonalyn Buchayo Echane said, Let's all be vigilant. Yes. Amen. Yeah, that's what it needs. And uh, Going back to Adhika Malaya, he said, hope to have a collaboration with you together with Bag, Bag right. Project. Yes, Absolutely. So he gave yes, a link. Yes, connect with us. Yeah, thank he you. He gave a link on their We will page. connect you with their, with their team. Yeah, salamat. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, these are, their group is a group of professionals. Like, they are working as IT, they're working mm -hmm. in call centers, who also have big hearts. Yeah, they're millennials. That's awesome. Very great. Salamat po. <laughs> yeah, I think there are more and more people here who want to work with us and support us with this advocacy. Yeah, we can have a regular discussion of this probably once a month so that it will be a, really an awareness. Yeah, an awareness to everyone. Yeah, yeah. And, also, to, and we're grateful for this opportunity for us to talk about things that mm -hmm. that we really care about. Um, mm -hmm. And I understand na hindi lang yung live ang makakanood nito, but people who tune in later on. Right. And, yes. and we're grateful for this opportunity. Yeah, salamat. And, right. And they can refer back to this video later on. Because sometimes we think that, oh, we, I don't need that one. But uh, in the future, we we realize that oh i should have listened like you know sometimes regret is always i mean comes at the later part of our lives especially <laughs> as parents we have to be mindful we have to be mindful of the activities of our children and also to reach out to our neighbors mm -hmm. you know family first but we also have the the responsibility to also i mean yeah, to be sure. our brother's keeper yeah exactly yeah Yes. <laughs> All right. So we have uh, learned a lot from you, Janelle and uh, Julie. Thank you so much for sharing your precious time again. So do you have final words for the parents or for the viewers in general? My last thought was I, I questioned for a long time why the Lord uh, called us to the Philippines, knowing that the, the situation is extremely... Um, it, it's huge here too in the United States, but I, I realized a few things. Um, first of all, that, that online sexual exploitation of children is higher in the Philippines than almost anywhere in the world. So my warning to parents is be aware of everything happening on the internet with your children and limit, limit their time to as little as possible each day, no more than two hours a day on any device, whether it's internet or not, um, no more than two hours a day and all of that time needs to be monitored. Um, I also know and felt very much in our years in the Philippines, how much God loves his people there. 
there is really something special about Filipinos. I believe their heart is in the right place. And, and those who are on any side of this coin truly are seeking light and want to be brought into that. And so I, I want to, to let you know what a privilege it is to, to serve in a country where I see people who truly desire what is best. And uh, I just wanna to leave you with, with uh, how grateful we are for you two for inviting us and for taking this message to everyone there who truly wants the light and who's willing to move forward. And what a privilege it is to be a part of your show. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. salamat po. I don't know if I could say anything else on top of that. That was a <laughs> perfect way to end. But yeah, I'm grateful. I know Heavenly Father loves all of us children. We are abused. We're abusers, all of us. There's no exception. And there is hope para sa lahat sa atin. There is hope. And I truly believe that. Um, and, and yeah, follow the light. That's all I could say. Is um, That's why we name ourselves Lighthouse Sanctuary or Parola Santuario. It's because we believe that the light is um, what will guide all of us to do and direct us. Um, and whatever that means, sabawat isa sa atin. But there is one true source of light, and we just have to follow that light, um, sabawat buhay natin. And um, salamat po. Oh, wow! Thank, Thank you, you so much. So before we we end, I would like to read this final message of Adhika Malaya. He's actually my cousin. <laughs> he said, "Nagahanap talaga ako ng mga ganyan na, uh, to support." And hearing how passionate this couple motivates me to do something and help them. So thank you so Amen. much, Adhika Malaya, for that. And uh, Michael Michael Echanes, thank you, Padilla couple and Fernando couple. Thank you so much, Dean Pop. Bishop Echanes and uh, yeah. Sabini Annelin Kim. This is the right time to raise awareness about this topic because of children going online. God bless you both. And... We'll keep on helping the kids at Parola Santuario. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, oh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. She's one of the teacher who teaches the kids yeah. at Parola. So, so we're we are so blessed. With them. Yeah, we are so blessed to have you both. Yes, yeah, salamat po. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And uh, let's all be safe and uh, be mindful of each other. Yeah, we'll see you again next time. Bye. Thank you for joining. Bye. Salamat po.